longsword. Boost an ally and give it armor. And trigger all loyal abilities. Alright. So we are about to continue the main story. The sound of approaching hoofbeats made Meave turn to see Reynard spurring on his panting horse, galloping at a breakneck speed towards her. Ill tidings I bring, Your Grace. Clearly. Glad tidings never arrive with such urgency. Our scouts captured a Nilfgaardian messenger. He was traveling in disguise and by night. When he realized his capture was imminent, he strove to destroy the letters he carried. We were able to salvage some in parts. Anything of interest? Yes, there is, I fear. Your Majesty, you must listen. Consider your offer accepted. Direct Meave and her force to the agreed site. We await their arrival. Your reward shall be as agreed. Hail Keritzer. A traitor. We might have expected as much. Nilfgaard has shown amply that it abides only by the rules it sets. Since they have not proved... The messenger. Have you questioned him? Naturally, Your Grace. Alas, he knows not to whom the letter is directed. He was to leave it in an agreed spot. I take it tidings of the whole affair have spread throughout the force? Yes, Your Majesty. The witnesses were too many to keep this fact a secret. We must thus assume the traitor in our ranks knows it as well, and will make no attempt to retrieve the scroll. A dead end. Have we any other leads or clues? None I fear, Your Majesty. Something dwells in this house. A beast with burning red eyes and a frightening growl. Perhaps it got something worth finding. But only a few brave souls would be able to fit inside. Not all might return. As are the typical odds in wartime, send them in. Tainted ale. This town, this card is now complete. You can find it in the commend tent. Mark a unit, boost it by 10. After three turns on turn start, destroy that unit and itself. Can't target awesome. seen that one. Lyrian winters are mild. <clears throat> Frosts are rare, and snow, should any fall at all, melts the moment it lands. Yet Meave's soldiers had now witnessed an expanse with the frosty powder belanket the peaks of Mahakam. They delighted in the harsh beauty of the frigid landscape. Then they were struck with an ingenious idea. To pack snow in small orbs and hurl them at each other. Hilarity and hearty laughter ensued for minutes. That is, until a troll joined the revelry. To their terror, he had brought rocks to a snowball fight. Don't let Meave die. Complete the puzzle by following special rules. Follow the main objectives to win the puzzler pride. This battle will only last one round. Many cards will appear in this battle.
Ah, should have listened to me, old lady. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. My spirit's willing and how, but these damn boots are killing me. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. Ever have a stone knock out one of your teeth? even supposed to do this my spirit's willing and how but these damn boots are killing me there's a time to reap a time to sow and a time to die have it the white of an eye from half a league away i have no idea how i'm gonna survive this Spirits willing and how, but these damn boots are killing me. I ah, should have listened to me, old lady. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. What the heck? My spirit's willing and how, but these damn boots are killing me. Ah, should have listened to me, old lady. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Thing about slings, they hide well. Hey, hmm. Should have listened to me, old lady. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. My spirit's willing and how, but these damn boots are killing me. There's a time to reap, a time to sow. Thing about slings, they hide well. Hey. Ever have a stone knock out one of your teeth? Ah, 
I've hit the white of an eye from half a league away. Should have listened to me, old lady. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. My spirit's willing and how the these damn boots are killing me. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Aye. Should have listened to me, old lady. Dang it. I ah, should have listened to me, old lady. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. My spirit's willing and how the these damn boots are killing me. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Ever have a stone knock out one of your teeth? I've hit the white of an eye from half a league away. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Ah, should have listened to me, old lady. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. I've hit the white of an eye from half a league away. My spirit's willing and how the these damn boots. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. My spirit's willing and how the these damn boots are killing me. I. Should have listened to me, old lady. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. Ever have a stone knock out one of your teeth? This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. My spirit's willing and how the these damn boots are killing me. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Hey? There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Ever have a stone knock out one of your teeth?
I've hit the white of an eye from half a league away. Ah, should have listened to me, old lady. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. Gosh, dang it. Lady, we've spotted gold down here among the debris. We can send a few soldiers to dig it up. If the rope snaps, these rocks will serve as our final resting place. I hate that I keep hitting map when I want to open up the camp, and camp when I want to open up the map. Neve's force neared Davor's abyss. Signs of beastly feasting were not hard to find. Countless paw and claw tracks were impressed in the blood-stained snow. Among the boulders, bones picked clean were strewn about. Gascon lifted one from the ground. Empty inside, he said. Something sucked out the marrow. Neve's soldiers feigned indifference to the grisly sight. They marched on. Their stepped rhythm unwavering, a song on their lips. Yet hearing a slight tremolo in their voices, Meave knew they merely sought to drown out their fear. A moment later, a commander's horn sounded, the signal to halt. The queen galloped to the fore of the column and found herself at the edge of a vast, round hole in the ground. She could not see the bottom. Meave drew her reins tight to prevent her mount from taking even one step forward. What is this? A crater? A desiccated lake? A mine of the strip variety, Gabor explained. Treasures we picked and shoveled for here. Diamonds. Till we happened on the beasts, that is. What now? Orion's a dam. Holds back a lake. If we can break it, water will rush in. Fill the abyss and the tunnels from which the beasts emerge. Just need to get around the mine first. Way down's on the other side. Meave squinted and gazed into the distance. Indeed, there was the dam. And at its foot, a swarm of beasts roiled about. Her soldiers gazed at their queen expectantly, their arms at the ready. She knew well they would rush into battle, in spite of their fear. Gabor! Meave cried out over the whirling wind. Have you bards here in Mahakam? Of course, Your Grace. Then we shall give them good reason to compose this day on the themes of courage, of heroism, of Lyria! Gee up! And with that cry, the Queen spurred her mount, grabbed a banner, and raising it high over her head, rushed headlong at the horrid swarm. All right. The dwarves delved deep into Dava's abyss, and from it pulled diamonds of unsurpassed quality. These stones glistened in all the courts of the north, bejeweling crowns, capping scepters, studding chalices, and glamorizing ceremonial swords. Some stayed in Mahakam, though in more mundane incarnations, as drill bits or crystal cutters, for instance. Yet the days of Davos' diamond delving were long past. Now only monsters crawled from the dark abyss. Gain seven charges on your old catapult without it being destroyed. Hint, keep your catapult main well maintained on all sides. Keep out of the Meave's story. 
Unique cards may appear in your hand or deck. Follow the main objectives to win the puzzle or battle. This battle will only last one round. Sorry, I'll try not to drink so loudly. We need to break through and destroy the dam. Grace, monsters approach from all sides. Make love, not war. For the Queen! Have our done in a jiffy.
I only loot corpses. Except sometimes, they're quite fresh. put stuff right next to that. That was my mistake. Here's the way down. We need to break through and destroy the dam. To the last! Your Grace, monsters approach from all sides. I'd hoped we could solve this some other way. John.
Excellent! The dam's about to give! Ridiculous. Here's the way down. We need to break through and destroy the dam. Why is the dog in there? Uh. Of course, the answer is because I wasn't paying attention. I don't like that answer. March on, march on. Grace, monsters approach from all sides. Nothing personal, I assure you. Looks like that's our man. For the Queen! God save the Queen! about to give when will you ever learn
go. Excellent work. And indeed, bards sang of this battle soon after. For no claws or fangs could break through the wall of shields the Lyrians raised that day. And no scales could protect the beasts from the Lyrian stinging arrows and blades. <coughs> Fight! Do not relent! Let us show these beasts! It is they who should fear us! The queen shouted. In the end, the beasts turned to flee, yet Meave's force cut off any chance of escape. A solid wall of men began to push the monsters ever closer to the edge of Davos' abyss. Pressed from all sides, the horrors began slipping over the precipice, screeching terribly as they fell. This card has been added to your army and can be found in the command tent. Silence oh, nice. came Some at blood. last. The queen stood at the edge of the precipice, breathing heavily, leaning on her sword. From the depths of the mine came muted growls and groans. Let's flood the damn hole, hissed Gabor, before any other shite crawls out of it. A rush of icy water suddenly rose, then just as abruptly plunged into the mine, flooding the pit. And where once lay Davor's abyss, now lay Davor's pond. Meave descended hmm. back into the pass, exhausted and covered in beastly blood, yet also exceedingly pleased. She was one step closer to Dwarven support in the war against Nilfgaard. Once the Lyrians had put some distance between themselves and the now destroyed monster lair, Meave ordered her men to pitch camp. Then she sent the quartermaster off for food and drink. The soldiers lit campfires, then set aside their weapons. Soon after, lively music and song could be heard throughout the camp. Your Majesty, Reynard said from behind Meave's back. A messenger from the Elder-in-Chief. The queen turned to see a dwarf in a richly adorned jerkin and a shako with golden seams. She stifled her laugh into a smile and lifted her chin proudly, expecting praise and a pledge of aid in the war against Nilfgaard. My lady, your daring deeds have come to the Elder's attention, said the dwarf in a measured voice. He's positively irate and demands an explanation. Irate? But why? I and my men, we've aided you greatly. Elder Hoog awaits at the Long Bridge. Yet be ways not to keep him there any length of time. And with that, all the Queen's enthusiasm for a celebration was instantly gone. She waited until the fires expired and the songs died down, then gave the order to march. Day 234, first day of winter. Going to be mighty rough. So cold the pickaxes are freezing to our hands. Had to cease work. Day 239. The snow has started. Two meters a day, no plow invisibility. Chimneys barely poking out of the snowdrifts. Day 245. Monsters attacking from all sides. Hard to hold ground. Huge losses. Day 250. Had to abandon the mine. Retreating to Boros Rump. Will return come spring. Petrid Fuchs. Oh. Now hold on. I need those goodies. Come here, you. Give me your goodies. Hey, more goodies. It's going to be some random freaking card for the Witcher card game, isn't it? Oh, wow. It's a border. I'm so excited. <sighs> Let's see. What are we at? Oh, wow. Making good progress. Goodies, goodies. Oh, 
Petrit, I agree the mine must be evacuated. Carry as much as possible of what you've extracted so far, and raise a red banner so our scouts can spot ye in the snow. All the burrow's rump looks forward to your safe return. To my folks. All right. What kind of goodies can we buy here? Look at two cards from your deck and play two, then discard the rest. Picking any two cards I want out of five? That sounds awesome. Uh, what am I going to lose? Honestly, I'm not using this ointment at all. Let's try that for magic. What do you mean it's the wrong game? It is what I said it is. Palisade. Ooh. Each armor gets or each unit gets one armor at the start of the battle. That sounds kinda nice. This one don't have enough for. This armory. Uh I don't think I'm gonna use any of that. And then workshop. Uh, yeah. Palisade it is. Very nice. Where are we at? Alright. Let's go call some trouble. Welcome to the lands of Clan Vidmar. You share a tale and we share the ale. Hoo hoo ha. Goodness. It's a bit windy. Gazing towards the horizon, Meave noticed a dark shape outlined against the mantle of snow that lay on the ground. It proved a tower, toppled and broken in pieces. Around it lay the ruins of other buildings, blocks hewn out of basalt rock protruding from the permafrost. That'd be the Clan Vidmar ruins, said Gabor, hollering over the wind. Rich ones had their clan seat here till earth tremors turned all into dust. Hundreds of dwarves lived here once, and now, not a living soul. Ah! Uh, help! Save me! On the well, contrary, there was one. someone midst the ruins, and said someone was clearly in trouble. Meave ordered her men to find the unfortunate soul. They returned moments later, leading a dwarf whose teeth chattered. They had found him in a ruined building where he'd sought shelter from ghouls. Judging by his appearance, the dwarf had spent the better part of a week there. Marco Vidmar, they call me, he said, patting down unkempt hair that seemed to reach in all directions. I came here seeking a family heirloom, lost in the tremors and the chaos they caused. I ken the chamber where it ought to be, but, well, beasts made their lair there. I cannot drive them off on my own, but bold warriors like you ought to cut them down in a jiffy. So, will you help? I too have lost my home, estate, said the Queen. So I understand well what you feel. I shall help you recover your heirloom. Call it a win. Mirko Vidmar's face lit up. Though he'd spent a week besieged and eating stale biscuits, and though there was a hoarfrost in his beard, he quickly trotted to the front of the column and led the Lyrian soldiers to the underground chamber. As promised, beast. Shortened battle. It's only one turn. The underground chamber was decorated with a dwarf strangling a shale mar with his bare hands. Another rescuing miners from a collapsed cavern. Then a third, wolfing down a succulent pork knuckle. It came no surprise Mirko wished to regain the relics of his famous ancestor. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Sorry, didn't notice. Okay, definitely getting that. Definitely getting that. Uh. Ugh. Yeah, we're reaching a point where it's hard to decide anymore. Yeah, he can go. Ugh. Traps are so freaking useful. Uh, he can turn her into a double boost, so I kind of don't want to lose him. Uh, let's lose the Forager. Oh, crap. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to get any better than this. The ruins. From there they come. Drive them back. Okay. Every turn is to summon an Ecker from the car. Okay. Um... Okay. <sighs> what do I want? Let's take that and that. All right, let's get one of these. Yeah! One of those. Oh, that's fine. Oh, am I not going to get the... Oh, come on. Oh, whatever. Okay. From here. Let's get one of these because it might heal puppy. Okay. Let's... Let's get another wagon bird going here. So from here, I think we need to end this battle. Because I think anything else we do is going to give us another one of those on the battlefield. And that's what I need to avoid at all costs right now. Oh gosh, it's a one-turn battle. I forgot. Okay. Well, now I'll remember that this time. Okay. Need one of those. Guess gone. Seemed kind of useless. I need to get rid of him, probably. Alright, um... That seems kind of useless. That's definitely useless. You know what, that's good enough. The ruins. From there they come. Drive them back.
For the Queen! Okay, those traps are super useful for this. No, I need that not to be the case. Oh, crap. Uh... Oh, crap. I am screwed. It's not too late to walk away. God save the Queen! I think I've got a victory coming at this point. You sure about that? Oh, I have no trinkets in my deck. Well, okay. That was the wrong move. Let's get a move on before All any right. of us show up. As soon as the fight was done, Mirko Vidmar ran towards a crate that stood on a pedestal, slipping on the now bloody floor. When the dwarf lifted the lid, precious stones spilled out. Your heirloom? This? Asked the queen, rather puzzled. I thought a pipe that belonged to your grandfather more likely. Golden froth. This card's been added to your army and can be claimed as a command. Seems to me, Brother Mirko wasn't wholly candid with us. 
This here's no heirloom, no family souvenir. It's the treasure trove of Clan Vidmar. We thought it gone for good. Pressed for the truth, Mirko admitted no family sentiment had prompted this expedition. The dwarf had planned to leave Mahakam and start a new life among humans. Yet he did not wish to do so without sizable capital. I can't stand to stay here a moment longer. The days, all of them, they're identical. Rise with the first cockscrow, march in double file to the latrine, crap on command, twelve hours down the shaft and home to sleep. Mirko complained. Want a wifey? Put in an application? In triplicate? Care to snip your beard? Elders got to approve it. You wanna add buttermilk, not cream to your mushroom soup? Clan council's got to debate it. How's a dwarf not to get balmy? I understand the lad. No two ways about it. Gabor sighed. But I feel it's my duty to remind you that what Marco's going and doing here, well, there are laws. Treasure's due the Elder in Chief, not to Marco. That's one. Second, any dwarf that wants to leave Mahakam can't take nothing but his breeches, his Dixie, and his coat. So, brief like. Consider well afore you make your decision, Your Grace. I sympathize, Mirko, said Neve. But I'm a crowned head. I must decline. National interest requires I show the greatest possible care for my relations with Elder in Chief Hoog. Yet in aiding you, I could sour those greatly. I shall return the treasure to him. I must. While you do what you will. Mirko Vidmar swore under his breath, then jostled his way through the Lyrian infantry and into the mountains towards human lands. Yeah, sorry, man. I am in the middle of trying to win a war. I can't unnecessarily pick a fight here. All allies in a row by four. All. Only the banner moves. Blown by the wind. Downright poetic. Prime material for a ballad. Perhaps even a whole saga. Lyrians rode a narrow, winding path along the rocky ridge. To one side were ice-covered boulders, to the other, a chasm hundreds of feet deep. They could have at least erected some barriers, complained Gascon, knocking snow from his cap. Got plans for that, Gabor said. Just need to decide how high to make them. What? Think, should they be the height of your average dwarf or a human? The debate's gone on for 20 years. On the one hand, you've got... Gabor did not finish his discussion. He was interrupted by the Barbagazi that jumped down from the rocks. Archers, shoot! Aim for on the belly! Neve's soldiers made quick work of the lone monster. 
but the sound of battle spooked the horses harnessed to one of her wagons. Whoa no. there! Whoa! Damn it! The driver tried to rein in the animals, but could not. They dragged him into the chasm along with his cart and the soldiers riding in it. They landed a few dozen feet below on a rocky outcropping. A moment later, Barbagazis swarmed everywhere. Did you see how they fared? Anyone left alive? Asked me, leaning over the cliff edge. Worry more about their cargo. Gascon replied. They were also carrying chests of gold. Blast. We can't get down there. Too steep and the snow keeps falling. We can lower ourselves down a line. But without armor, shields, or heavy weapons, otherwise it will snap. And the Barbagazis? The queen said, brow raised. We shan't kill them with daggers. They're too thick of armor. We'll have to try. Or continue on our way. Hey. You only live we once. need it. Meave sighed. Gascon, round up some volunteers and let us move out. Moments later, the queen was lowering herself down a line straight towards the gaping maw of a Barbagazi. Her only armor, a woolen shirt. Meave's parents long refused their noble bored daughter lessons in the arts of the sword. Yet, nevertheless, did she train in secret. Wearing a blouse instead of armor, a kitchen knife in place of a sword, imitating the maneuvers she witnessed in nightly tournaments. Now, forced to fight without proper equipment, her childhood ex exercises would prove most useful in her than she could have ever imagined. We have to eliminate the Barbagazi. There are special rules. We have to follow the main objectives to win the Puzzler Prize. This battle will only last one round. That's good enough. Careful! No one try to be a hero! Oh, that was close. Bereft of sword and shield, Meave could not withstand a single blow. She thus danced atop the frozen snow, deftly dodging the Barbagazi's lightning-fast strikes, while delivering but a few well-aimed hits of her own to their eyes, ears, and gaping jaws. When the last monster fell lifeless to the ground, Meave walked up to the shattered wagon. The soldiers it had carried were bruised, frostbitten, but alive. Your Grace, we were sure you'd leave us. A good ruler never abandons her folk. Nor her gold. Gascon interjected, while securing a rope to a chest. Soon enough, all were safely back on the path. The admiration Meave saw in her soldiers' eyes was in itself sufficient reward for her difficult battle. down this way. Hey, soldiers. 
Oh, a puzzle buffight. Buffight. Mindful of the intensifying snowstorm, Meave halted the march at a roadside inn by the name of the Stone Hearth. Waiting for a turn in the weather, Meave bided her time by playing a round of Gwent with the innkeeper. It appeared the residents of Mahakam played by a set of rules different from what humans were accustomed to in the lowlands. We have to destroy the Stone Hearth resident hero, Garth Rockstew. Units whose armor is reduced to zero are destroyed. Every turn, draw a card. Complete the puzzle by following the special rules. Follow the main objectives to win the puzzle or prize. Battle will only last one round, and unique cards will appear in this battle. the enemy hero by Golden Drake's power, or force Golden Drake and an enemy to damage each other by their own power. Huh. Bovine flatulence. Roaches the pirate. Either damage the enemy hero by roaches the pirate's power or force enemies. Roaches the pirate and an enemy to damage each other once by their own power. Once the pirate has displayed some of this unit from the deck. Sailed into troubled waters, mate. Let's restart then.
All right, let's see here. You've sailed into troubled waters, mate. Natural, of course. Yes, Duan. wish my duty let's see
five. Naturally, of course. Follow me this way. Yes, Duan. Gears, they are turning. Card has been added to your army and can be found in the uh, command tent. Blizzard. Welcome to Nien. This is this Avatar in the Gwent multiplayer card game? Which, of course, is the entire reason I'm playing this is for multiplayer cards. <sighs> All right, give me 90 seconds. Bone Talisman has one random trinket, and I pretty much got convinced that was useless. So, yeah. Oh, hefty mantle of fresh snow today. Got a blow before too long. Wow, lots of new markers. Okay. 
Oh, we've got some enemies. Let's get them. The fact that Elder Brover Hoog has finished spring cleaning does not mean the passage was safe. Off the beaten track, amidst icy windstrip ruins, beasts still skulked, eager to ambush naive travelers who strayed too far from the road. Eliminate both the reckless and shrewd vampires. Do not let any more of your soldiers get seized. Use your leader's ability. Complete the puzzle by following the special rules. Follow the main objectives to win the puzzle or prize. The battle will last only one round, and you will have a custom deck, which is part of this battle. Okay, eliminate both the reckless and the shrewd vampires. Oh, we already we already said all of that. So the lowest and the highest will be seized, huh? Will be seized this turn. Highest will be seized this turn. start. Okay, so I'm supposed to attack them when I get that back over to my side. <laughs> Got it. It's going to be highest this turn. It's going to be 
lowest this turn. Highest this turn. It's going to be lowest this turn. The Workers' Commission has determined that the nasty stench floating around Craig's Pass, gold mine, is not in fact a fart, faultless or otherwise, but is caused by methane fumes. As a result, please heed the following. Do not enter the mine until the stench is cleared under no circumstances. Do not come within 30 paces of the mine's entrance with a flame. Apologize to Volta for any inconvenience you've caused her. Hoo hoo ha! So, the official word before that official word was Volta has been farting and that's why it smells so bad. And, and, and that was the correction. Ooh. That looks like a dragon of some sort. Dear son, if you've opened the family tomb, it can only mean your father has passed now and rests in peace beside me. Please do not grieve, for this is the way of life. Always has been, always will be. You're the head of the family now. It won't be an easy undertaking, but fret not. I set aside a sizable sum for this very day. You'll find it where we used to watch the sunset. May the future be long and bright. Your mum, Vavakara. So we're going to Grey Robin, huh? Meave now witnessed a sorry sight. A mass funeral for miners killed due to a tragic convergence of events. Their lead caskets lay upon the snow, wreaths of hop cones laid upon them in turn. The mourners waited for the diggers to finish. The digging was tough, for the ground was frozen. As the crunch and thud of picks and shovels continued, the dead miners' foreman scrambled onto a boulder to make a speech. Angry shouts and loud booing stopped him. Ye knew it! Ye knew they'd smell vapors, but ye ordered them to keep digging till it blew up in their faces! Make the daily quota whatever the cost, eh? Ye blood on your mitts, whore son! A mourner then picked up a chunk of frozen ground and threw it at the foreman. Blood spurted from the gash that appeared on his forehead. The first dirt chunk was followed by another, then by a rock, a brick. Meave realized that if she did not intervene, the foreman stood to be stoned to death. Meave resolved not to meddle in dwarven affairs. She did not know what Mahakam's laws would make of the situation, nor was it certain the accusations against the foreman were true. She spurred her horse and led her force away, quickly leaving the cemetery and the turmoil behind. Honestly, I can't... I can't intervene if I don't know no. what's going on. A speech for the four dwarf. Rot slow, ya. All right, let's go and pick a fight with a dragon. Suddenly, a piercing shriek came from above. Giving no chance to react, a large creature swooped down from the sky and plucked up an unfortunate infantryman. His blood was splattered across the snow, leaving a crimson trail straight to the beast's nest. Remember, this is a standard battle. So I need to make sure I don't accidentally 
blow everything on the first turn. <laughs> I mean, this looks pretty good to me right here. Yeah, that's about perfect. John. For the Queen!
God save the Queen! Coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. When will you ever learn? We must trust each other. Okay, that should be enough to win. The Lyrians ascended the highest section of the Mahakam range. Snow crunched under their boots, cold air stung their lungs, and the wind snapped at their cloaks. <sighs> Meave wiped sweat from her brow and turned to Raynard. There! By the rocks! We shall... The rest of her words were drowned out by a powerful blast. The entire mountain rumbled with a low, vibrating roar. The sound grew louder, echoing off the rocks, splitting their ears. The Lyrians looked around, disoriented. Few heard Gabor's warning. Did I just stand there? Get behind the rock! Quick! Hurry! Meave followed the dwarf's gaze. 
and cried out in terror. Oh no. The snow stuck to the mountainside had started to slide down the slope, sending up mists of icy dust. Before she could react, the white torrent knocked her to her knees, crushing her and smothering her into the ground. All she felt after that was all-encompassing cold and fear. Meave survived. The dwarves who ran to the Lyrian's rescue dug her out of the snow in time. Some of her soldiers were not so lucky. The queen looked at their bodies, blue, frozen. Next to them lay dead horses, demolished wagons. The losses were enormous. Meave wiped her cheek. Her tears burned her frozen skin. Gabor spoke a while with the leader of the Mahakam Guard Patrol that had come to their rescue. His face was dour. What? What have you learned? Uh, I'll tell you all in good time. First, you need a warm drink, good victuals. No, Gabor. I need to find out what in blazes happened here. Well, it was an avalanche. Of course it was an avalanche. I'm no fool. But what caused it? What was that noise? Um, <clears throat> Signal horns. Ours. So you brought this snow down on us? Dwarves! Well, I, but, uh, unawares. I'm extremely curious how one sounds a horn without being aware of it. That <laughs> must be quite a sight. Meave, let me explain. I will. And the explanation better not sound like a clumsy excuse. See, we clean our mount regularly. The, the, the way men folk shovel snow off their roofs. Otherwise, the whole shebang would come tumbling down in our heads. When snow's gathered deep enough, we blast our horns to cause a controlled avalanche. Then we need to, but, sweep up a wee bit in the road safe. All well and good, but why did you decide to clean up right as I was passing through? I'm wondering that myself. Schedule says next cleaning should have been a week from now, but someone has the route to be cleared earlier. Who? Me, but I'll tell you. But first, promise you'll... Who? Hey. Ovin Ep Klenvok, the Nilfgaardian emissary, think it were meant as revenge for attacking their caravan. The bastard. Reynard! Reynard! Wait! Wait! I understand you're a wee bit upset, you've every right. But you'll never prove Ovin meant you harm. The sly weasel will make sure he did any dirty- He was willing to risk to get her revenge on the Imperial emissary. By the elder sideburns, I had no notion anyone was in the Vale. All right, let's go west. Uh, there, my lady, whispered one of the scouts. Left of the path. Meave squinted. The Nilf Guardians had taken shelter from the falling snow under a rocky outcropping. The smell of roasting meat wafted from their campfire, and echoes of laughter could be heard. The black-clad soldiers had reason to celebrate. They had just decimated Meave's company without even drawing their weapons. Meave's gaze caught something else. A metal container into which the Nilfgaardians tossed bones once they'd been gnawed clean. It looked strangely familiar. Only after a moment did the Queen understand it was an overturned Lyrian helmet dug out of the snowy grave of one of her men. The Horsons! Meave hissed. They'll pay for this. Meave! Asking your last time to keep a cool heat! Whispered Gabor. You want vengeance? I get it. But think of the cost. If so much as a hair gets plucked from Ovain's head, Bruver will never forgive you, and you can kiss any hope of aid goodbye. Silence followed. Finally to be broken by one of the scouts. Milady, what's the order? Do we attack? No, we'll get it later. said the Queen after long deliberation. But, my lady, they... I know what they did, and that I shall never forget nor forgive, said Meave, placing a hand on her scout's shoulder. But breaking Dwarven law only plays into the Nilfgaardians' hand, causing us to lose allies and our chance for victory. 
Yep. Meave brushed the snow from her trousers and straightened her spine. Avenge our comrades we shall. Not here, but in the fields of Lyria and Rivia. The Lyrians resumed their march with heavy, beleaguered steps. Their path still piled high with the snow brought down by the Nilfgaardians. We had a chance to attack Nilf Guardians, and we did. They had a chance to strike back. While passing and they the did. mining settlement of Kolstok, Neve heard the sounds of battle. Hey ho! Into the fray, lads! Expecting she would see monsters swarming dwarves, the Queen set off at a gallop to the rescue. Her braid blew about in the wind like a banner, showing her men in which direction to attack. The dwarves she saw, however, were not engaged in a battle against Shalemars and Barbigazis. No, they were going at one another. Luckily, no weapons had yet been drawn, but given the dwarves have hands the size of bread loaves, this did not necessarily mean there would be no deaths. Oi, lads! roared Gabor Zigrin. What's this foolishness? Calm the hell down, damn it! Gabor's intervention proved successful. The dwarves limited themselves to verbal jousting. Meave, who was no stranger to barrack room talk, nonetheless turned crimson at the dwarves' cursing. Piecing together the obscenities, Meave concluded they were debating an old quarrel about the height of a certain mountain, or rather of the twin peaks atop it. One of them lay in the territory of Clan Dahlberg, while the other in the Hoog's land. Each family felt their peak was the highest, all measurements indicating the contrary being total fabrications. Queen? started Gabor, nervously chewing his moustache. They're asking if you, as yin impartial and a fair-minded wench to boot, wouldn't you wish to settle their idiot squabble once and for all? <laughs> Meave knew well that this type of age-old quarrel could easily end in bloodshed, so she resolved to help. Representatives of the two clans gave her a strange mechanism she was to use to measure elevation. All that was left was for the queen to button her coat up to the neck and scale the twin peaks. Time to end this delicate feud, once and for all. When she and her force had traveled half the way to the first, she heard a long roar that made snow shelves detach and descend. Without waiting for her scouts to return with reports, Meave drew her sword. Fighting on a steep mountain slope is no easy task. The Lyrians struggled to find solid footing in the snow, propped up by their spears, their eyes squinting under ice-speckled brows. Whereas the beasts... Well, they moved with ease, leaping from rock to rock, long talons scraping menacingly against the stone. This is a shortened battle. Only turn. Only one turn. You know what, I like it. Let's go with this. Oh. Oh, screw you. <laughs> uh. Eyes up, lads! They're flying straight for us! For the Queen! God save the Queen! Oh, what? No! Ah! Oh, why would it let me pick an empty row?
My pain serves a purpose. Make love, not war. All right. That's no problem. Take those measurements and let's be gone from this place. I have the power! What? The Lyrians managed to repel the monsters and reach I both too, peaks. Upon each, Meave ordered her men to take the measurements. While waiting, she admired the breathtaking view of the Mahakaman Massif. The dwarven contraption left no room for doubt. The peak within the Dahlberg clan territory was two feet higher than that within Hoog territory. Gabor was clearly displeased with the results. Oh, damn it all! I'd hope you'd prove Bruver's clan was in the right. He'd have been content to see the Dahlbergs knock down a peg or two. And, possibly, he'd have been more inclined to help you, said the dwarf in frustration. Then, after a pause, he added, Although, only you saw what the device showed, Queen. Perhaps you could, uh, no. recalibrate the results a wee no. bit? No. To lie would be simple, true, said Meave. Yet to forget the matter would be so much harder. No, Gabor, I shall tell the truth. The Queen's tone made it clear the discussion was over. Gabor let the matter lie, and Meave's force began its descent down the mountainside. The dwarves of both clans had been waiting with bated breath for the expedition's return and report. As soon as Meave announced the results, the Dahlbergs rolled barrels of beer out into the square and began to celebrate. Naturally, the Hoogs were disappointed, yet they accepted Meave's results as final. At last, they had come to trust her. Dahlbergs are the dwarves we need! Every Hoog's a dunderheed! All right.
not going to get there. Not going to get there either. That's a maybe, but unlikely. That's even less likely. I could probably sell everything and get there. I don't even think I would use it, though. Of course, I can't get there unless I get to the other one. I don't think I can get here either. So, yeah, we're just kind of stuck. Stuck where we're at. button. One of these days I'm going to hit the map button when I want to hit the map button and the camp button when I want to hit the camp button because I keep messing that up. Like every time. For first bite, you'd best avail yourself of some onion juice. Even better if you had a wee nip of vodka. Uh, onion vodka, huh? As Meave neared Langbridge, she ordered her bugler to announce her arrival, then retired to her tent to freshen up. Gascon was already inside, awaiting her. I do not seem to recall summoning you. In that case, I must tell you to fret not. Nothing wrong with your memory. I've come with no agenda. Spontaneously, call it, to chat. Hmm. Then I propose you leave. Just as spontaneously, call it. I must don fresh clothes. I'm to see the Elder soon, and I'd prefer to not smell of horse sweat. Doubt it'd make much difference to him. And be assured, I know what I speak of. When last we met, I found myself standing downwind of him. A pungent experience. My patience is near its end, Gascon. Either state your business, or I shall have the guards escort you out. Ugh. Not a hint of a sense of humor. There's something you ought to know. And decidedly before you meet with Bruva. The sights we cleared of beasts. I ferreted a bit. Noted something peculiar. Any notion what it was? None. The monumental dwarven architecture, perhaps? Bones, my dear Meave. Dwarven bones. Now, guess what I found on them? Wait, don't dare give me any hints. Bite marks. Of course. After all, they'd been gnawed clean of all flesh by monsters. Incidentally, making it quite easy to spot other markings. Ones made by axes and swords. To be certain, I showed the bones to our medics, and they confirmed my conclusion. Meaning what? That the entire clan, the Fuchses... ...did not perish due to an invasion of beasts from the depths. The monsters merely ate the bodies and occupied empty homes. Now, I shared my discovery with Gabor. And guess what he did? He panicked. He started to squirm, babble nonsense. I wager my right arm, he's hiding something. Blast. Overly eager to aid us from the start he was. I might have sent something. I shall have him summoned at once. And I thank you, Gascon. I won't forget this. Minutes later, Gabor stood before the Queen. At first, he tried to mislead her with evasive answers, but, as her pointed questions demolished one clumsy excuse after another, he had to give in. Oi. As King Desmond said after a hefty squirt in his hose, we can't sweep this under the rug. If you think I welcome jests in this moment, you err. My fingers itch to summon the hangman. Right. So... Tis true. I misled you. On our clan elders' orders, supposed to make sure you destroyed Burr's Rump and Davos' Abyss thoroughly enough to leave nae a trace. What? Why? What did they wish to hide? They was home to the Fuchses, our mortal enemies. They'd been a-boil in our hineys for ages, thumbing their noses, taking what they want, when they want. And the Elder-in-Chief didn't gi a plowing wit. So to stop them, our clan... We did the unpardonable. The Zigrin elders saw their chance and they... Gods. So you were responsible for the deaths of all those dwarves? Me? I, I, I didn't raise a finger. Tried to stop them, in fact. No witnesses survived. Meaning you must have murdered the entire clan. How? Queen. You sure you... I am. And you should be sure to answer in full, omitting no detail. A few years back, we got 
pummeled by a horrendous winter. Stone-breaking frosts, white-out storms, avalanches. Made travelling a painful form of suicide. Hunger drove beasts out of their dens. Pass was covered in the filth. Got to where they paced right outside the walls. Fuchses fought a hard, bloody fight to keep the critters out of Daver's abyss. Lost near every axe-wielding dwarf they had. Only survivors had to winter at Burr's Rump. Our elders felt such an opportunity would they knock again. After killing the town's meagre guard, they... They set fire to it and barricaded the gates. They... they didn't stand a chance. Bastards. How in the world did the truth go undiscovered? Once it were over, our dwarves opened the gates. Before they'd lit their pipes, starving beasts came crawling out of the pass. The stank of dead flesh were strong. Zigrins who came back from that never were the same. If you'd only gandered their gaze when they had us all take a vow of silence. And then... You invented that blarney about primeval monstrosities the Fuchses had awoken by mining too deep. A riveting tale, and one with a moral to boot. Aye. But the Elders worried Bruver would suspect something all the same. That's why they wanted you to destroy all the evidence. Repugnant. You claim not to have taken part, but neither did you do anything to stop the massacre. What was I to do, exactly? The Elders had decided. Nay, a dwarf would listen to me. You might have informed the Elder-in-Chief. The guilty would have been punished. The guilty? You didn't ken Bruva. He'd punish the whole clan. Women. Children. No exceptions. Maeve. Queen. I'm begging you. He cannot ever learn of this. Aye. I want a hack flame too when I think what the Elder's done. But other way it'd bring but more pain and death. You've got a lot of nerve, making requests after lying to me. Trying to ensure you can the stakes. But... You'll do as you see fit. Like always. I need to consider what's right. Meanwhile, Gascon, make sure Gabor remains our guest. Of course. I'll let you know if he so much as rolls his eyes towards an escape route. Approaching an important moment in your journey. If you choose to continue, you will not be able to return to any unfinished activity in the area. We finished 12 quests in 8 hours. There are 6 puzzles completed, 5 standard battles won. We got 6 out of 8 golden chests. Bruva stood by the bridge like a statue, arms crossed, eyes squinting. Meave sighed inside. She stood little chance of having a pleasant chat. Elder in Chief, Sir. No Saren and Grayson here, lass. Plowed humans. Always out to fix things, always end up cocking them up. You think you're due glory, do you? Monster slayer Meave? Patroness of dwarves? Blast it. What do you think? Why didn't I exterminate those beasts myself, eh? Go on, tell me. For you. For I didn't want to. For something didn't affect, damn it. So I resolved to not destroy their nests and evidence till I learned the truth of who done it. Postponed it all those years expressly. Though your subjects were dying. I dunna need no lectures from the likes of you. Justice must be served. That's worth any price. And I was close. Had leads. And now it's all gone to hell. You flooded the Vore's abyss. You brought Boros rump down on itself. And I'll never ken who killed the Fuchses. Understand? Never! I would not be so sure. Sure of bloody what? That you shall never learn the truth. For I learnt it just moments ago. Twas the Zigrins who killed the Fuchses. The Zigrins? But... Hold, hold. I would explain a lot, that. Ah, the snakes! Worms! Rogues! Why, I'll show them! All right. 
Got you admit you've more in that pretty heat of yours than I expected. But dinner you start thinking we'll be toasting a new friendship. You want our aid? You'll have to answer our questions. My questions. Lots of them. And they're all hard, so dinner you go smiling at me yet. Why, I wouldn't dare. Better <laughs> not. Right. Time we moved on. Ruva set off at a brisk pace, paying me nor anyone else heed. The Elder's bodyguards rushed after him, then came the Lyrian force, and at its end trudged Gabor Zigrin, hands and feet in shackles. Card's been removed from our army. Land bridge, it is strictly forbidden to stomp, jump, lean over the edge, stop for a rest, carve runes in the handrails. Hoo hoo ha! <laughs> Wanted to hunt monsters, eh? Dwarves demonstrate innovative thinking in many domains metallurgy, engineering, architecture. Yet there is one in which they could not be bothered naming. For this reason, the bridge that linked the Mahakam Pass with Mount Carbon was simply named Langbridge. Meave learned it was a thoroughly fitting name. Having stopped for a breath halfway across the road suspended over a deep chasm, the Queen could see neither end of the bridge, both concealed by thick clouds. Amazing, whispered the Queen. I feel as though we traversed the very sky. The Queen and her retinue were nearing Mount Carbon when Meave heard a cry. It was Xavier. Hold! Hold! Meave drew in her reins abruptly. Her mare neighed and reared, lifting the queen above her formation of men. From that height, she saw the last pier of the bridge crumbling. The dwarves at the head of the procession were unable to stop in time and plummeted, screaming into the abyss. What's the meaning of this, God damn it? Bruva roared. Face the engineers! No! The queen was striving to calm her spooked mount when she sent something swish past her ear. Out of nowhere, a Scoia'tael band had appeared at the rear of the column. Hmm. Before anyone could react, elven archers had felled the rear guard. The soldiers lay on the bridge's stone surface with arrows in their backs. Meave was trapped. In one direction lay the chasm, in the other, a fierce foe. She had no choice but to stand and fight. All right, let's take down the Scoia'tael. This is a story battle. Unique cards may appear in our hand or deck. The battle will last only one round, and unique cards will appear in this battle. The Lyrians watched in disbelief as Scoia'tael warriors slit the throats of Makim guards. How could this be? Non-humans against non-humans? To what end? Could it be the Elder Races do not uniformly support the Squirrel's cause? No doubt these questions and more plagued the men's thoughts, yet it was not the time to entertain them. This was the time to fight. Definitely keeping him. You are mine. We're trapped, Your Grace, but we can try and fight our way through. Elrin! Mahak, you poor bags can do whatever the devils you please. This is Mahakam! Business for me.
God save the Queen! One they came est. Special prize, just for you, love. We will see who is weak. Don't get my ale. You did not have permission to do that, puppy. May your sword and arm be one. I'd hoped we could solve this some other way. I was hoping you'd say that. That should be it, right? Blood and neck ends. Similian Vat. No! Blederena! She must die! Their strength combined, the Lyrians and Dwarves managed to defeat the Scoia'tael. The Gorillas had weakened the last span of the bridge, turning the crossing into a deadly trap. Had Xavier, who noticed the weakened structure at the last instant, not called out, all would have fallen into the chasm. The Lyrians managed to capture the unit commander. She stood, her head raised high, and when Meave glared at her, she did not avert her eyes. Crow's Eye. This card has been added to your army. It can be found in the command. What is your name, Elf? 
Abayeth met a past one. She said, uh... Thank you, Reynard. I know well what she said. Kiss my <laughs> ass. Is that truly the best you can muster? I'd rather show you exactly what I can muster. Tell them to unbind me. You got your opportunity. On the battlefield. Will you not tell me what they call you? Fine. It's all the same to me. I'm more interested to know how you came to be here. Who sent you? No one. It was my decision to kill you, and thus avenge Eldane. You've elven blood on your hands. The blood of the elves of the Mulderwood. I regret the events of the Mulderwood. I did not wish those elves' deaths. Yet they left me no choice. What choice would you give a murderer who invaded your home? <sighs> you know I envy you. To see the world solely as black or white, it must simplify things so. Enough. I've heard all I wish to hear. But I have Did you fall in your heed, elf, eh? If you want to fight humans, go on and do it. You cannot talk sense to Egypts and nay here, damn it. Mahakam is and will be neutral. You cannot be neutral. To Dwan, you are either their foe or their dog. Mahakam has stood aside sleeping long enough. That is why we struck it in its very heart. Hmm. As a call to battle. A call to brethren whom you, Elder, have kept from the world too long. I have kept him away. I've been bloody right to do so. You want to play at war, you numpties? You want to force the Pontar to flow upstream? Gang right ahead. Good riddance, I say. Gun kill, gun die if you fancy. But God damn it, leave us alone. Yeah, I should kill you. With my own hands, I should cut your throat, put you out of your misery. That's what you want, in it? To die? To die a stupid death? Well, I'll not grant you that. Nay, nay, I'll lock you in a tower. Sit there three centuries. Then you just might grow a brain! Bruva Hoog gazed after the shackled elf as she was led away. Neve expected him to continue fuming, cursing her. But the dwarf stood silent. And his old eyes, half concealed by brows bushy as a forest floor, showed not anger, but the deepest sadness. Dwarven engineers made quick work of repairing the crumbled bridge span. here uh, there we go Crow's Eye, move six random enemies to the other row and damage them by f two. Oh, I can see that being very useful. Not going to go there. We can buy something now. What do we have supplies for? Astray's Den. I don't think that's anything I can use. to the max, though.
So we've got a war wagon now. That can be useful. Look, Mount Carbon. Damn! And I thought Novigrad was big. So the elves are against us. Against our elder. Treacherous hounds. Mount Carbon. Wipe your feet, comb your beard, but foreign garb not be long here. Carbon's heart, can you hear the throb? You're a dwarf, damn it, not a slob. Hoo hoo ha! The Lyrians stepped inside Mount Carbon's bowels. Neve rode while looking upwards, admiring the intricately carved ceiling, gilded walls, monumental bas-reliefs carved from basalt. Yet this was no time to admire the sights. Bruva Hoog had summoned her to speak. I thank you for your invitation, Elder. My invitation? Choice term, lass. You wangled your way in here. Long I've lived. But ne'er have I seen a wench so stubborn. With all due respect, do you not feel like a pot conversing with a kettle? Mm. Ah, true enough. Changes of mind didn't come easy to me. But they do come at times. Human wars concern me not at all. For so many they are, who could count them? Near a year goes by without one wanking king invading another's realm. A dog with scabies is less restless. That's why this morning I aimed to send you off with nothing. Mattered not what the clans were saying. Revia, Shmevia, who gives a sheep's fart? But that was this morn, before that daft wench and her pups attacked. Nilfgaard supports the Scoyatel, it's common knowledge. Nilfgaard uses them. Well, I'm nay worse, and I choose to use Queen Meave. Hmm. So what use would you make of me, if I might ask? You've a plan? Aye, the kind dwarves like best. Simple, but sneaky. Like to give Nilfgaard a warning, you can. If you're going to rile my dwarves, draw them into the Scoyatel ranks. You'll regret it, aye? But I'd like to issue the warning without declaring war. All clear to you so far. So, when you march out of Mahakam, you'll find a company of our foot dwarves waiting out with the gate. Officially, volunteers enlisting with you against my will. And you're to put them at the fore next time you face Nilfgaard. Want the black lads to break their teeth on our bucklers, get a taste of our axe blades. After that, dare say they'll think twice before they send more Scoyatel into these hells. I do not. Thank you, Elder. You restore my hope that I shall have my home back in the end. Faith can move mountains, aye, but it cannot do much about borders. I've watched you close, and must admit you're a plucky lass. <laughs> that enough for Nilfgaard? Can I be sure? We will see. We shall know soon. Volunteer Corps. This card has been added to your army and can be found in the command tent. Mahakam Mangler. This card has been added to your army and can be found in the command tent. Mahakam Shieldbearer. This card has been added to your army and can be found in the command tent. I would like to march at once. So by your leave? No, <laughs> not granted. At once? What's that mean? Our laws are clear. Guests are to be sent off with a thundering feast. Even the humans. Bruva, as was Bruva's wont, insisted. So the queen accepted the invitation, but as was her wont, set a condition. The feast was to last but one night, and not, as was the wont of local custom, an entire week. All clans were to be represented at the feast, save one, of course, the Zigrins, for they had already learned their punishment. The entire clan was banished from Mahakam. An exception was made for one of their number, for Gabor, who was beheaded before the day was done. Mm. When the sun had retired behind the peaks, the underground city came alive with the sound of bugles, bagpipes and horns. 
the dwarves emerged out into the central square and danced exuberantly, sparks kicking up from their hobnail boots. The usually crabby elder-in-chief Hoog proved a cordial host that evening. Let's drink! Lest our neck shafts grow cobwebs! Suddenly a messenger arrived. Bruver lifted his copper horn to his ear and listened with furrowed brow. What's that? Speak up! When she saw a sour grin on his face, Meave knew the tidings were not good. Yet she did not suspect they pertained to her directly. Meave, you expecting anyone? How's that? Runner says a delegation's arrived at Carbon, Freluria and Rivia. Got a Nilf Guardian escort. How dare they? Traitors. Who leads it? Uh, you'd best sit. Who leads the delegation? It's your son. Villain, I fear. Villain? Markham remains neutral as regards all your squabbles. I trust I needn't remind you. So I'll have no scrambling nor shoving, and certainly no bloodshed. Point of fact, I'd prefer it if you... I wish to speak to him. I'd forbid you, but, as I said, never seen a more stubborn wench. All righty then, jabber away with him. Just remember, hands to yourself. Meave spotted banners, a Lyrian eagle upon one surrounded by Nilfgaard's black rags. Her hands became fists, showing how helpless she felt. Mm. Then her son and rival, Willem, emerged from behind a row of Imperial footmen. My, my. I should apologize. It seems I missed the coronation. Congratulations, my son. Who was it who placed the crown? General Epdahi? Count Caldwell. Ah, yes. Our elder statesman. Why have you come here, of all places? To acquire arms for Nilfgaard? As my official mission, yes. Yet unofficially, I wish to speak with you. I trust you've had tidings from the field. Edern turned to ash and dust. Vizimir murdered Redania in chaos. Faltus forced to strike a pact by his vassals betrayed. Hensult the same. This limerick, will it come to a point? Why, yes. To the same as this war. Mother, I beg you, you must see it. N Nilfgaard's victory is inevitable. Surrender now, and I shall show you mercy. For later... <laughs> later, it'll be too late. There will be no later. We shall repel them, drive them south at the points of our pikes. This we, Mother, who precisely do you mean? You stand alone. I prefer to stand alone over standing with Nilfgaard, with the invader, as you do. Mother, in declaring for the Empire, I saved the lives of thousands of our subjects. And in so doing, our honor lost. Folk who had their huts burned down care deeply about our honor. Is that truly your belief? When I was crowned, a fact you deride, though that makes it no less true, I swore the good of my subjects would guide me. And a war we are doomed to lose cannot in any way benefit them. And slavery can. You know well the Blacklads put peasants in chains, like cattle. Reprehensible, I agree, but... And resettlement? Forced labor? Cruel laws that make death the punishment for the slightest offenses? Are those benefits? Well, answer me! I see I will not sway you, Mother. A shame, though I take comfort in the fact I tried. And now, a Jew. Oh, no. I, not you, will decide when this conversation is over. Oh. Have we anything else to discuss? Are you perhaps aware that the North Guardians tried to kill me? What? No, I, I... I heard only about an avalanche. Which tumbled down through no small effort of an Imperial envoy. Never would I have agreed to such a heinous act. I believe you. I'm heartened that despite all we... I believe you because I believe the North Guardians wouldn't ever have asked your opinion. Think on it, son. Are you their ally or their tool? Can you ever be sure? I am the king of Lyria and Rivia. To serve my subjects' best interests, I am prepared to make even the most painful concessions. Might I leave now? Or is there more? Naturally. How did you know you would find me here? I... I received Nilfgaardian reports to the effect that you've been seen in the past. Oh, roses are red and so are your cheeks, my son. As ever when you're caught in a lie. Lyria is two weeks travel hence. Had you received word only once I was here, we'd have been long gone from Mahakam by the time you assembled a force and completed the march. No. You were forewarned of our intended route. 
It means I've a traitor in my ranks. Another one. Get out of my sight, Dylan. And pray we only ever face one another on neutral ground. Meave struggled inside not to turn and gaze once more at her son. He'd changed since they'd last faced each other, grown manlier, and he wore the crown well. The Queen returned to the banquet hall. Her advisers shot her questioning glances, curious what she had discussed with Bruva. But Meave decided to keep the details to herself. One of them wore a Nilfgaardian lead around his neck. Until she knew who, she would have to remain vigilant. Feasting's done, Reynard. We must consider our next move. I've thought on it, Your Grace. We've strength enough to hit the foe, but still not the numbers to face him in open battle. So what do you propose? This war we cannot win alone, nor even with the dwarves at our side. But if we secure a victory, small yet symbolic, we shall show the other realms of the North all is not yet lost. Thus, I propose we attack behind the front lines, somewhere well clear of any major Imperial force. Where would you suggest? I'm a source of building material for Nilfgaard's fleets. All too little, I fear. Since we require a victory that would be symbolic, we must strike where it shall hurt, and Angren... Just recently welcomed a new regent in the person of Count Coldwell, my third argument. Naturally, if your majesty wishes, I'm prepared to present alternatives to this. No need. We march at dawn. Me, a viper nested among the Lyrians. Someone who had conveyed the Queen's plans to her foe. From this moment on, Meave would need to weigh every word she uttered, even in the presence of her closest associates. Your Grace, we must plot our course forward. Shall we take the Western Passage into Angren, or...? Not now. When, then? Dawn approaches, yet we know nothing of where... I will not repeat myself. The Queen knew she would learn the traitor's identity in the end. If need be, she would tear the name from the throat of another turncoat, Count Caldwell. Meave drooled at the prospect of seeing Caldwell in chains, then passing him to the hangman. Saddle the horses. I shall take the fall. The time for diplomacy, for preparations and negotiations had gone. Meave was to attack her foe at last, and she could not wait to do so. We have the high ground. At long last, Meave's force reached Angren's marshy woods. Ever been? No. Count yourselves lucky. Are you certain we haven't lost our way? Alas, here there is no way. We continue south, that's all. South meaning the bottom. Should you ever venture there, I offer you this advice. Do your utmost to make no noise. <laughs> Poor soul. His comrades cried out, reached out, but alas, Amidst frothing waters, they heard bones cracking, the moan of metal bent and crushed. What the... bloody hell, what was that? Rather not know, personally. Hold your positions! Arms at the ready! It was a glusty warp. One of many the Lyrians would encounter along their path. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. At last, Meave and her force stood upon the Yaruga's bank. To find and punish the traitor Caldwell, they would have to cross the river. Yet the sole bridge nearby was in Nilfgaard's hands. Your Majesty, some new reports require your attention. All right, well, let's read them. Report, Angren. Angren, partly under Nilfgaardian control. Black-clad troops hold key fortresses and transportation arteries, but little beyond that. Swampy wilds remain uncharted, untamed. Count Caldwell rules Arangren. 
in behalf of the Emperor. Commands small division of Tulsa Castle, south of the swamps. Nilfgaardian troops also supervise log-cutting operations supplying their fleet. Further danger presented by monster attacks. Foul beasts present, uh, present in Angren's wetlands in numbers far exceeding those found elsewhere. Letter from Bruverhoog. Neville, remember that volunteers from Marakam aren't to go without victuals, bevies, or brawls. Do not be stringy, I'm paying. And make sure they don't churn about with other troops more than the absolute minimum. Keep them segregated. I do not want any of your idiotic human fashions depraving my decent dwarves and infecting the mountains when they get back. B.H. P.H. If you fight the black clads with the same mule-headedness you showed me, they're in for a solid beating. Do not give up. Letter from Captain Tobias, number three. Your Majesty, you surely know already Count Coldwell's been handed control of Angwin. Your son Willem seized this chance to assert his independence. When General v Deep Vaidi, sorry, General Aip Dahi is absent from the capital, the young prince pushes his own decrees through the Council of Peers. It is not for me to judge whether this is all according to some plan of the invaders. Yesterday, emissaries from Temeria and Cadwen came to court. I am afraid they seek to cut a deal with the Nilfgaardians. If R Redania joins them, the war will end, and the enemy shall triumph. My lady, the North needs victory, and you must know your fight is of the utmost importance. We need you now more than ever, says Captain Tobias. Nothing new of the trinkets. And nothing new of the, the grand folk. But of the warriors, we do have some news. Many dwarves take little in the way of food and offer much in return. Uh. Yes, Your Grace? Reynard, you fought in the first war against Nilfgaard, did you not? Yes, Your Grace, though as a mere captain then. Were they equally cruel? Did they scorch fields, turn peasants into slaves? No, Your Grace, they fought with honor in those days. So, what's happened? Why the change? It's said Emperor Emir Va Emrys's heart hardened over the years. He's grown crueler, more ruthless. His soldiers' zeal for violence has followed suit. But you don't say that. No, Your Grace. To your mind, why do they now despise us as they war against us? It is ever easier to loathe those you know. Before the first war, they knew nothing about us. Then they saw they the better weapons, larger cities, superior craft. But in our towns, Waste flowed through the streets in open gutters, and they concluded we weren't their equals. It's far easier to kill when one holds such a belief. It's time I attended to other matters. Oh. Hey ho, how's my favorite queen in the north? Ever have regrets? Feel remorse? For what? Oh, I don't know. Killing innocents, perhaps? Murdering travelers, pilgrims? I've always warned them. Won't touch a hair on your heads, provided you don't resist. So, see, gave them a choice. Besides, innocence? Please, Meave. We both know those to be mythical creatures. Everyone's got something on their conscience. So there's always call for murder? That's right. Dead right. You need but answer it. It's time I attended to other matters. Farewell. 
Yes, my lady? I haven't had the opportunity to thank you. Had you not been so alert, we'd have fallen to our deaths in Mahakam. I merely did my duty, Your Majesty. <laughs> Modest as ever. Yet once the war is over, I shall make certain you're properly rewarded. My lady, the one reward I desire is victory. Your victory. Other matters await my attention. We shall speak later. As you wish, my lady. Seems like a good place to stop. 